da 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 uh, Welcome to the developer chat this December 8th, 2008. Uh, we have some special guests here today. Um, we have the Chaz, our developer engineer, as always. Uh, helper Yoko, our customer care manager. And we also have Michael Wilson, uh, the CEO. Say hello, Michael. Hello, Michael. Looks like Mike will be uh, t typing today. All right, let's go. So how do you want to start this, Mike? Do you want uh, to just uh, get some questions rolling, or did you have a statement that you wanted to make? All right, uh, for those of you who don't know how the developer chats work, uh, to get queued up for a question, just send me an IM um, saying, I have a question, you don't have to ask me the question, and then I'll call on you in the zone box and say, you're up. And then you ask your question, and we'll respond. So fire away. Don't everybody I am me at once. FMD, please ask your question. Question is, are we getting custom bottoms in StyleMaker for men? Tops 2. Okay, so we don't have necessarily custom style maker uh, tops and bottoms, but we do have a set of um, their fitted uh, tops and bottoms for men. So next batch of style maker clothes. Um, uh, next batch of style maker clothes will uh, include the the fitted tops and bottoms. So they're not cut it. Uh, custom as far as you being able to change like sleeves independently but you can do the transtone magic to kind of make them look differently they are fully mapped so the hands and everything are are mapped actually that might have um, covered my question which is you know I was trying to work with a style maker men's tops and they're really you know a bomber jacket there, there just weren't really any choices in there. So that's being fixed, right? Yeah, it'll be a, an additional uh, set of items. A, ma a male's top and bottom that's fitted and fully mapped. Do you have any idea when the release, release date is for that, Chaz? I do not have any release date for that at this point. All right, thanks. Great. The next question is from Francis Seven.
You're up, Francis. That's your question. Um, sorry, I thought we were supposed to write it in the box today. Uh, so I'm wondering if we can get a, a clarification or perhaps some guidelines on... Sorry, I'm trying to read it. On the upcoming issues with, the, with, for example, with no picking up and how it affects props, as well as future limitations on how props are being implemented in as much as... Uh, as much as how other members are going to be controlling other members' user experiences. Something. The no picking up is the current permission for, uh, it, it was the permission for drinks and it followed through to um, props as well. What was that first half of the question, Francis? Do I need to type? I'm sorry. No, not at all. Um, no, I, I was just wondering if, if that was going to be changed at some point. The, for example, I rent a lot in Karuna, uh, Karuna Gardens, and uh, about two feet away from my lot is another lot. Um, you know, we don't get any kind of warning. Walk over there and you know, boom, there goes whatever props we have. Right. Yeah, so so we don't, yeah, we don't know what the...
Our next question comes from Big D26. Okay, yeah, I think I'm coming through. Um, buggies, mannequins. Um, got mannequins for the clothing designers. What's the chances of getting? We call them in the community buggy kings. Buggies that work. For, mannequins that work for buggies would save on a lot of lag. Yeah, that. So that's been talked about is applying the, you know, the mannequin idea to other types of of models, being able to uh, use them for vehicles and things like that. Nothing's been designed yet, but that's kind of one, one idea that's been talked about. And it's apparently very excited about the idea. Oh, we do love it. I mean, it would mean we could display our vehicles in a, in a location, meaning that we would, uh, you know, reduce the lag because, you know, we're not going to have so many vehicles or items out at once. Right. Yeah, it makes, makes sense. So you say you've talked about it, what's the, uh, you know, chances of getting this implemented? Uh, well, we talked about, you know, using the mannequin technology for other styles of developer items. Uh, nothing's been designed yet. You know, we haven't, we haven't started as an active project, but, uh, you know, it does does make sense as far as using it for other items. Our next question is from Angelius, and I want to point out uh, if anybody has any question, any more questions about props, please uh, start asking. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw in the latest uh, beta, if you made it into the latest beta, but the the action tags have been set up to match what the drinks are, which is basically hidden for everybody except for your, yourself. Okay, well I, I didn't get that in, into the beta, but just action tags in general, seating tags, everything that has an action tag. Some rooms are so filled with action tags, there's like 80 of them. It's just kind of annoying. Our next question is from Alexandria D. Two questions, actually. Go for it, Alexandria. The first question is, why do, why don't buggies stay put on lots? Um, I guess some of the some of the vehicles are I guess a little bouncy, and depending on what they're put on, will move around. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, there was a there was a project at one point where you know we had talked about sleeping buggies, but I'm not sure um, where that is. Um, other than that, buggies kind of hoverboards and everything. They kind of uh, they they stay moving even when you're not driving them. They're still active. Uh, we, we didn't implement, yeah, there were more napping. 
they they do less physics while they're um, while they're still, so they'll do it less frequently to make them uh, take less resources. But they don't actually fully go to sleep. There was uh, there's reasons why, you know, that's not easy to do. And the second one was uh, props can basically be whatever developers um, you know, can can create with them. So if they're making hats or dresses or umbrellas or hula hoops, um, you know, they basically can create any of those types of items. Well, we have we have uh, like knee-high skirts that are well. These these are meant to be developer items, so they can you know they can create the items they they want. I mean, actual scoots are a lot more complicated to create. You have to kind of properly weight them, and if there's any issues there, um, you know, it's a, it's a lot more complicated to create actual clothing scoots. There would be really no way to create a a long scoot that wouldn't have issues. Um, and if it, you know, if it was if it was scoot that we were creating here, um, you know, it, it would have to work when you were sitting down and things like that. The half skirts are just about as far as you can go. Even even there, you can see you know some. Some uh, some issues with uh, stretching with some of the textures, but that's about as far as you can go uh, before you really have issues. All right. So the the next couple of questions I have are from one from Netrider. So Netrider, go ahead, and then after Netrider, Banshee Kate. And then Francis, and uh, we don't have Michael for very long, and I think that Michael's really here to talk about props and stuff. So if you guys really, if you guys want to get some questions asked about props, please ask now. Go ahead, Matt. Um, there's nothing nothing scheduled at this time for developing the other uh, poses. Um, I'm making a note of you know the types of things I'm seeing in the thread, and I'm glad that you guys put that thread together. Um, you know, so those those will get added to the you know developer projects list as far as uh, you know poses that you would like to see. Um, you know, the more generic the pose, you know, in other words, if it can be used for a lot of different items, that's, of course, more desirable. Um, but, you know, keep those ideas in the thread going. We're watching it. All right, Banshee Kate, then Francis Seven, then Sassy Beamy. Um, at this early stage in the game, is there any chance of props being converted to an item that could be accessed through Change Me, which makes a lot more sense? Uh, well, no, they're they're not actually clothing items. So, I mean, that would be almost I know. complete redesign of how the the UI works. Um, 
you know, there is work being done on the UI. Um, you weren't at the last gathering. I believe we did a demo of some of the things that are happening with the new UI, with being able to resize the uh, messaging windows and things like that. Um, so the U new UI will allow us to do things like, you know, make improvements to organizer and uh, change me and things like that. So, you know, at that time, I would think that, you know, how we're doing basically the UI for inventory would be looked at. Um, but it's not a, a simple change to just, you know, put props in, uh, change me and have them part of outfits. Oh, all right. Uh, I was just hoping that I know they're not scoots uh, as far as what's being contained within Change Me, but it just makes so much sense, so much more sense to uh, have them in that uh, Change Me location. But thank you. I believe the next question is. Oh, okay, I see that mic is still answering. Yeah, Francis was, uh, he was next. I know he's waiting. I don't know if you uh, caught, um, Michael was uh, was typing in the instant message, talking a little bit about how we're going to be implementing the new UI in the client. So basically, um, for those listening on the voice, uh, <coughs> the, the first iteration of the UI will basically be using the U new UI with the current you know, change me and everything. So in other words, uh, trying to keep the features pretty much the same, but introduce the new technology. And then once we kind of are sure that everything's working, then we start redesigning on there and improving the way the things work. Uh, thank you. So I've got uh, Francis Seven, then Sassy Be Me, then DJ Badlands, then Yoshi Toshi, then Elor. Yeah, I'm wondering um, why the community wasn't included in any of the decision-making process regarding the new, you know, prop policy. It seems to circumvent what's been done a lot in the past with community input as for regards to violent items, and items that uh, might look threatening. So it was an unwritten policy?
To answer Elora's question, um, we actually only had three items, weapons um, submitted. One of them was a sword, a very large menacing sword, and the other two were tridents. So those are the three weapons that we had submitted and um, unfortunately rejected. So will my scissors be rejected if I have somebody make scissors? Is that going to be deemed a weapon or can I not run with scissors in a virtual world? Oh, that's cute. I have a feeling that their that their next item is going to be tar and feathers. Just so that we don't get off the topic, I still have a list of people who have questions, and I am not sure if those questions concern this topic. But um, just for the sake of you know keeping this conversation going. Um, those people, if you guys have questions that re regard this topic, um, just feel free to, to ask. Just don't speak over each other. Let's just start the conversation rolling. Well, actually, I do. Um, the policy of not allowing us to pull out more than one prop at a time. I understand the reason why, but most of the other stuff is, is so innocent. It's annoying that we can't use them at the same time. You know, like I can't wear a long skirt and hold an umbrella. Unless I made both items. Yeah, but, so that's not a policy or anything like that. It's just the, the current design of carryable objects is you can hold one carryable object at a time. So in other words, you can hold a paint gun or a drink or a prop or a treat bag. Um, you know, it's not, it's not a matter of uh, seeing any sort of uh, policy issue with holding more than one item. It's just that's the current design. It knows of one thing that you're holding. Oh, is there any way to fix that? Uh, could could that be changed? I, I guess everything's po you know anything's possible. It's just a matter of you know where that fits in with the priorities on everything else that that has to be done. I'm not sure I completely understand that question, Sassy. Can you um, clarify? I believe that the question is, so
No, I, I still don't think I understand. So um, I I think what you're saying is why can't we um, why can't we limit those items um, to specific places while we're while we're approving them? Um, I think that the answer is that we don't have a mechanism to have that kind of granular permissions yet. If that's your question. Well, the, the permissions aren't per item. It basically says, you know, props themselves have certain permissions. So it's not like a particular developer item will have, um, you know, its own individual permissions. It knows that a, a prop follows uh, certain permission rules. So then you can take a zone and, and you know, just like when you go into the zone on the permission pages, like, you know, six different items, no drop, no no changing clothes, no, you know, doing this or that. Um, those particular permissions um, are mirrored, you know, in places like Zona or, or, you know, different FUEs. So basically, you can say, don't allow dropping, and then a prop itself can say, I can't, you know, be worn when the no no dropping rule is in effect, um, you know. But that's not that's not a particular from the no during submission. No, the, these are the, the permissions are uh, per type of object. So all props share that that permission. It's not anything that's scripted in or anything like that. Yeah, I think that this is something that should be clarified. I think as I've been reading a lot of the forum posts and. I've heard some of the feedback come from certain members, um, and even at the, um, at the at, at certain meetings that I've gone to. I think that uh, one of the, the the misconceptions is that some of the limitations that are built into a props were actually built in there purposefully to to uh, I don't know prevent people from from griefing or from doing other things like, for example, only being able to hold one prop or the way that they work in zones with no permissions. Um, props are still very new and the CHAS has been working really hard on them and they're built off of, you know, some existing technology as well as some new stuff that he's been working on. So the reason why, you know, you go into a zone that has uh, no drop or no pickup um, in the zone, you know, retrieves the the prop into your inventory is because it that wasn't exactly one of those things that we thought of when as we were developing it, and those things can change. Um, but uh, a, as far as the the policy, which Big D you're asking, um, there there are definitely questions that can be answered about. Yeah, that's uh, that's basically the the same type of thing. So the way when you get into a vehicle, anything you're carrying happens to be put away. So it, you know, it's kind of um, you know a pre-existing design. It's already it was it was there when when props came out. So I believe Sassy asked her question, and DJ just asked um, the daggers question, if anybody wants to talk about that. I think that the or answer, can you hear me in the window, can you hear me? Sorry, my window stopped scrolling, so I didn't see that you were speaking, and I was like, "Why can't I? Why aren't I speaking?" So, uh, I think that the answer with uh, the daggers is the dagger is an emote, and it's supposed to be more of an implied type of thing. It's not an actual dagger. It's more like, uh, you know, in cartoons, when the daggers come out of your eyes, that means that you're giving somebody, you know, the evil eye or the stink eye. It's not really a dagger. It's, you know, the the stink eye. You know, I'm. I'm daggering you and, you know, it's not like I'm pulling out a weapon and impaling you on a spike.
Let's slow down with the questions, guys. Hang on. So there was something that I saw a while I don't want to talk over Michael. It is a, it is a very good point. It's the 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 point that he's making about you know we're rolling this out and you know I will sell my fun zone and leave this place in 2.2 seconds. No, I'm saying that the I I don't think that that's actually what's going to happen. There's this point there. The point is we're working towards something. We're working towards a goal. And right now, there are those limitations that we've set because we understand that some of those props might be misused in certain areas. And certain members that won't want to see those kinds of props. Um, and So for the nitty gritty, I know I, I read some a couple of pages back that someone had the question that we aren't allowing weapons. So we are not allowing weapons as a handheld item. You can still carry weapons in a holster, on the sheath on your back, on a sheath on your side. It's not about that. It's about the handheld and about it being threatening. And so there are still weapons in world. Obviously there's, you know, a machine gun or something that's laid on the side there, there's a helicopter 
that's all there. Likewise with the alcohol, you'll still see beer cans as a decorator item. You will st see a beer keg. However, as an item that's being handheld, as an action item, those items at this moment, because of the permissions and that, you know, it, it's an item that's available in the FUE, those items are still not allowed, and that's what we're um, going towards right at this moment because it's an action item. And obviously these items, you know, are still available in the passive areas of a prop node. I actually am not in product submission, so I couldn't tell you, but it sounds to me like a box of cigars probably would be approved. Um, I don't know that for a fact, because I, like I said, I'm not in product submissions, but a lit cigar in someone's hand, um, I'm not sure that that's exactly the kind of um, impression that we want to make with, well, with anyone. That's kind of what we're working towards, Big D. Like, that's kind of the point that we're trying to make. So, so not, if they were not allowed in places like CC Metro, Cosmo Girl, and things like that, would we... I mean, if you have the ability to stop that from entering those zones, my neighborhood, for instance, would I be able to carry a handheld um, firearm, for instance, in my own neighborhood? Would those objects still get rejected because of their, um, you know, what they are? Well, right, but that's that's actually the uh, that isn't something that's in place now. That's something that's going that would require a whole lot more work. Um, I don't know how much more work, and I'm not exactly going to say that, that that's something that is a. Uh, uh, that we're working on, but I'm just saying. For now, we don't want, you know, a brand new member to show up in there and have a gun waved in his face. But he can have a paint gun pointed in his face and shot across the world. For sheets and gills, you're more than welcome to hold a glass, a wine glass, but if it was titled or labeled as wine, that wouldn't be allowed. However, definitely a wine glass is fine. But it would probably be titled as, yes, red juice would be just fine. Red Kool-Aid from the chat. Well, the Long Island iced tea is fine um, if it's not labeled Long Island iced tea, if it just looks like a colorful drink. Iced tea with the pineapple. Uh, to answer Alexandria's question, uh, wouldn't it be easier when someone who signs up under 18, they're automatically not allowed to see the violent props, and then everyone else can decide on preferences. They want to see all of the props. That code has to be written. That, that requires engineering time, that requires, uh, uh, you know, a whole lot of work. So that's, that's kind of the point that we're, that we're trying to make on, you know, do we release the props now and set limitations and then continue to work towards, you know, um, making it more granular so that we can create more granular permissions so that we can actually d designate what types of props they are and what kinds of areas they're allowed in, et cetera, et cetera. Or do we just you know, sit on props and wait until that code is ready um, to release it all at, at once. And I think that the, that, the, that the right answer for that is, you know, release it now so that developers can start playing and so the developers can start using these things. 
now instead of you know saying no we have to wait because we need to create these new permissions and this new and designate engineering time to to create all these I've never heard that, uh, Francis. You're saying that the the turbo on on yeah. vehicles doesn't work when you're holding a prop, and I'm guessing a drink either. Yeah, I didn't try it with a drink. Uh, I was on a hoverboard, and then somebody else mentioned in here earlier that it didn't work with bikes. I haven't tried it on others. Yeah, if you're holding a drink and you are in action mode and click, it, you drink the drink. So it's probably the same thing with props, I would assume. Oh, yeah, I guess it would be, but there's no sound effect. Interesting. I thought you couldn't uh, do anything with the drink besides pull it out, I mean, with the prop, except put it on or put it off. I tried to drink my plate. I couldn't do it. Yeah, but I guess uh, what Laura's saying is the te technology for carryable things may consider the, the left uh, mouse button like an action, so it's used by paint guns to shoot, and it's used by drinks to sip, so it's possible that that's already taken care of. Huh. If, if it is, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll check it out and I'll file it as a bug if, uh, if that's true, which I'm guessing that hey, it is. Would it be possible then to make some of these props like drinkable or eatable items? by including a checkbox that would let us do that? Um, yeah, that's possible at some point. Uh, I mean, it was kind of thought to, to bring out the, you know, props first to get kind of an idea of what we want to do with them and also, uh, you know, one, one kind of limitation with the drinks is, of course, is a sip. So, you know, there's a sip counter. So that does mean that, uh, you know, the items will disappear after a certain amount of time. Um, but, I mean, that's certainly possible for the future. That's called planned obsolescence. Yeah, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Um, you know, the prop prop was kind of, uh, you know, between between the two that, you know, the props, of course, gives you a lot more flexibility as far as, you know, the types of items. You're not restricted to just things that you can drink. Okay, and I, I saw another question. Could that be expanded at some point to include the fire fire node? Yeah, I think so. That would be a good item for the future. So I have on my list of people who needed to ask questions. I think that Sassy asked her question. Am I correct, Sassy? And then DJ Badlands had a question. So as far as tutorials, yeah, they're, one of the projects that's kind of on the, you know, the developer project list is, you know, improving tutorials and, you know, the documentation that we have on the website. So we've done some of the work to the website to make it easier to create such documentation. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as writing the tutorials, um, we haven't done any work with that. Uh, so we've kind of been talking internally, you know, on different ways that, you know, we could address the documentation, you know, because it is, I mean, it, it is a, um, a bit of work to create those, and we want the documentation, of course, to be useful. Um, 
you know, but in the meantime, you know, as far as the types of things that we can work work on, um, you know, for example, the props required some changes to uh, fix some of the alignment issues that were that came up in the beta, and you know, the the offset for the shadow and things like that. So there were some things that needed to be changed for um, for the props to you know, to be useful as a developer item. So, you know, you kind of have to weigh, you know, the time that I would spend working on props. You know, does it make sense to be working on a tutorial? Does it make sense to be working on the technical side of, of props? And, you know, considering that a lot of the developers, uh, like, you know, Uber Geek and, you know, the folks at you know, UOT, you know, do a lot of work coming out with, um, you know, tutorials and, you know, even holding classes in world, um, you know, that that's a good way that developers can contribute to that that area. Um, and that's always, you know, the, the stuff that we had for StyleMaker, you know, doesn't compare to the stuff that Dreamweaver has come out, for example. Um, and, you know, a lot of developers enjoy teaching classes and, you know, doing tutorials like that. So you know, I, I don't think you really, you know, want to discount that whole effort. All right, guys, it's uh, past 6 o'clock. I think that I'm going to let uh, Michael off the hook. If you want to be off the hook, Mike, um, I think that you answered a good uh, portion of the really um, intense questions. So... Uh, But just so you guys know, we're going to continue the meeting. I still have a list of people here to go. Um, I still have Yoshitoshi, Elor, Disky, Mike Sassar, Francis Seven, and NetRider6. And now, uh, Femi D. So, go ahead, Yoshitoshi. Alrighty. Um, let's see. You talked about earlier the uh, whole rigging problem and skinning and weighting the skirts. Is there any plan for doing any hierarchy animation or bone-based animation for props? There's no project in the works for that. Um, you know, is it is it something that could be addressed? You know, with a future update. You know, that's certainly possible. Um, Very cool. Yeah. I mean you got to start somewhere, right? And, and you know, it's kind of thought to, to introduce props. Up till now, we've kind of, all the objects have kind of been either vehicles or static do objects. So the prop kind of introduces a new uh, new level of developer item. And we kind of have to see uh, where we go with that. And, you know, what, what are the developers uh, what kind of improvements can we do to them? You know, we're talking about like with the permissions, how we can make that more granular, um, and then what other features that we can apply to that. So that's kind of you know all things that we're watching. You know, I've been watching the thread that's been going on in the forum. You know, different uh, requests that are coming out of that. Very cool. And if you do get the bone-based or hierarchy uh, animation, would you consider actually tying that into the animations in game so when you walk forward it actually does a walk forward animation or something? Just as a consideration? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't really know. You know, when props came out, um, you know, there were some, some initial goals with it. Um, you know, to be able to hold objects without tying them to, you know, the drink animation, um, and plus being able to connect them to different nodes at the same time, um, you know, but, but expanding that out so, for example, you can be juggling with, you know, with a set of uh, bowling pins or something like that. It's bowling pins is okay, right, Yoko? <laughs> she says okay for bowling pins. Um, <laughs> um, but joke, uh, not juggling knives, though, I, I guess. Um, bowling pins that are on fire. 
uh, but being able to j uh, juggle them and have the, the avatar um, animated along with the bowling pins would be a really neat thing. But, um, you know, that's, that would be kind of expanding out the props to, to be able to do things like that. Yeah, sorry, I dreamed big. No, that's good. I think, uh, I think a lot of people do. Actually, I think that there is uh, a law against bullying pins in a province in... <laughs> uh, I believe the next question is from Elor. Uh, I don't know if that you have asked it already, because I know we went through that... Um, we went through that conversation. The mob? We went through the mob scene. Um, yeah, my yeah, question... We're, we're skipping you now. My question evolved. Actually, it's where are props in the grand scheme of things? I, Michael already left, so I guess it doesn't necessarily matter now to ask, but, you know, how, what kind of... What are we, chopped liver? <laughs> you make those decisions? Well, as a group, maybe. Uh-huh. So, what is it We then? bring those decisions to Michael, and... Council. So, is there an answer to that, or what, what's going toward props I, now? I mean, this is a really like the biggest thing I've ever seen, actually. That's a, it's a strange question that you ask, because um, there are a lot of things that we've implemented in the world that can be considered the biggest thing to certain people. Well, it's not because it's not it's, it's subjective. You know, it's the biggest thing to you. You know, real estate was the biggest. No, thing No, that to was just else. a comment. That wasn't actually my question, Vash. I, I I know. It's just it's it's just um, there are a lot of priorities and a lot of things that people want. There are things that people have been wanting for five years that start that start with the letter Q, um, and you know. Or the letter C. That, that's six years for the, for the letter C, um, and and so on. Um, there's there's a, a lot of different priorities, and um, props are neat, and they're they're uh, adding a great level of detail to what we can do to our avatars and changing the way the face of there, um, in the same way that. Uh, a lot of our really cool features have done. I mean, the, the introduction of the paths changed the world. The introduction of neighborhoods changed the world. Um, I think that uh, props are, are going to be uh, held very highly to us because this is great. Uh, my back is to you because I keep seeing people jumping up and down and it's freaking out my eyes. And so I just wanted to not be watching people jump up and down. So I don't so know. What's the answer I, to the question? I, I don't really have a good answer for that. The, the where where it is in the priorities list. Um, I, I guess right now we're we're really working on the uh, the the funnel project, the the first user experience, and um, keeping members in the, into there. And uh, hopefully, we will. Uh, I'm a future politician. I'm not a future politician. I am a politician. That's what my my job description. I'm sure that's what it should read. I'm a politician here. No, uh, I'm serious. I'm, it's it's going to be one <laughs> of those things that that will be prioritized the way everything else is, and um, of course with the uh, the amount of people who are really interested in this project, it will probably be bumped up in the priorities because well, there's a lot of people here at this particular meeting, and this, I think this is the the most participation that we've had at the developer chat meeting, and I think it's all because of props. So, um, speaking of which, uh, give every, everybody should give the Chaz a hand because um, it's they're wonderful. They're really amazing. Uh, U sheets. I think you should give them both. So, so one of the. Uh you know, one of the other projects that, am I talking? I don't see my talking. Oh, my scroll, my scroll is uh, stuck. Um, so one of the other, you know, developer projects that's, you know, still ongoing is the whole project of interactivity. Uh, 
you know, one of the projects I've been working on, which, you know, as, as Vash said, you know, uh, the whole first user, uh, what we call the funnel, is a pretty important project for the company right now. So one of the projects I've been working on as well is the, the welcome walkway. Um, you know, and that's just a matter of, you know, the size of the company, the amount of people that we have. You know, we have to kind of wear multiple hats. Um, but a lot of the stuff that's happening in the welcome walkway is using the interactive, um, you know, the scripting language. And that's allowing us to keep on improving the options that we have with scripting. Uh, now, as far as where developers lie in that, well, you know, developers come in many forms. You know, we have we have the general membership. We have people that we contract with. We have uh, you know, kind of partner developers like a Metaversatility or a Trilogy, uh, and each of those people kind of uh, contributes in different ways as, as bringing in new con uh, content. And the whole interactivity project was basically making it easier to bring in uh, scripted content. Uh, so one of the items that was released recently, and uh, you know, thank you to the, to the group help, that helped test these, is the developer mannequins. So, you know, that's not specifically developers submitting scripts, but you now have a item that you can drop and configure. So you don't have to submit every item as you know a unique mannequin developer item you can basically take one mannequin and dress it up in all your clothes and sell it off of there and you know 3d shopping has kind of been an important uh, item on the to-do list for quite some time a you know or an item that's been asked for quite a bit um, you know so props is you know is one of the items interactivity is going on, and also the uh, you know the mannequins as well. Uh, also, the last batch we included um, some of the seating groups, some of the, the larger seating groups, and also that 80 by 80 um, PAS item. Uh, so there, there's. It's not like there's one particular item that you know we'll work on and and just work on that one thing. There's pretty much a, every day is kind of multitasking between, you know, several different items. Our next contestant, all the way from California, Disky. Thank you. Actually, this is a pretty good lead-in because uh, props is actually where my question was going. Um, I bought the mannequins. I put the mannequins out. And then it told me I could only put out 15. Now I have this big lot that I am paying rent on so I could put my mannequins out and I can't put them all out and I have more clothes than 15 in auctions at any one given time. It was a choice of that or making them five drops. <laughs> so yes, there's, so there's a certain amount of items that you can put into a zone because a zone uh, from a technical standpoint, has a certain amount of memory side uh, uh, set aside for it. Um, if there isn't a certain limitation with that, what will happen is the zone will just blink, and, and you know you'll end up not being able to drop the items. So right now, to get things started, um, basically there's a limit of 15 interactive items in a zone. Uh, that means you can still use the 50 drops. So unlike a, a card table or a porter home, that um, you're you're basically limited. Uh, you know, if you drop a 15 drop uh, porter home, you only have a certain amount of drops left. Uh, it was we're trying to do the the interactive items as one drop, but there's a certain limit on the amount of items that you can put in a zone. Uh, we're still trying to improve the, the memory usage of a of a you know of a zone or a port of home or, I mean a, a port of zone or a lot um, you know but until we're comfortable that you know we're not going to have memory issues with those um, it was decided to, to do the 15 drop limit on mannequins uh, my other problem is I can't dress any of my male mannequins at all 
You they can't. Always give me, no, they give me this error that one of the items, so they don't put anything on it. Um, the farthest as I've gotten is I got it to wear a hair from there shop. But even though I've taken the numbers off of uh, auctions, it says it can't find one of the auctions out and won't put anything on it. These are the male mannequins. I have no trouble with the women because I just mirror. And are you getting a message back from them? Uh, can't find one item, so it doesn't put any of it on. So could I you, putting, yeah, very strange. Um, could you start a post in the developer? That way we can get you know more specific with this particular um, issue. I don't, I don't know if we'll, we're going to be able to solve it here. So um, if you start a post in the developer forms, you know we can maybe figure out what, and then other people will be able to read it as well. That sounds like a great idea. Uh, next on my list, unless Tiski, do you still have more? Or? No, I just want to drop more than 15. I had this whole layout planned. You know, I'm paying all this money on this rent for this lot. You know, that's expensive, and I can't do what I want it to do. Yeah, well, it'll <laughs> and I just, waited so it, long for those. It would just decrease your experience. So if you had 50 mannequins in your area or more than 15, then all of your shoppers would probably lag and not want to go to your shop. We're just, you know, watching out for you guys. But I, I think that F Francis actually pointed out um, in uh, an I am to me somewhere that we should probably put that in the description, the pro item description. So I think that that's a good idea. I got a question that's kind of similar. Uh, well, if you have a similar question, sure. Yeah, uh, well. Right after you is Mike Cesar. Oh, sorry, then. No, go ahead, Francis. You, oh, uh, since your question's similar. Well, well I, was, I was just thinking, aside from changing the catalog uh, description, I was wondering just if interactive objects, does that include the lights? Because they're not included under interactive objects when you go to drop them. No, the, the lights are... It's anything that falls under that. Well, right now it's only mannequins, but it, it's anything that falls in the interactive group under... Uh, your gear menu. So if so we get a sign or something someday, we'll be limited to 14 mannequins in a sign or something like that. Right. Okay. Right. So, I mean, the idea, again, is, um, you know, it's a choice of not having the limit and having zones crash and, you know, having people wonder why the zones are crashing or put a limit and hopefully, uh, you know, kind of not have that issue. If we can make improvements where we don't need to have that limit, you know, certainly would want to do that. All right, I think Mike, did you did you was your question answered? Oh, great, awesome. Uh, Netrider six. Hey, your text changed. Whoa. So, so you bring up a really good question. So you bring up a really good question, NetRider. Um, it is a bit subjective, but I will tell you that the forum thread that I saw on Pitchforks, um, when you actually look at it, it's definitely a trident. Um, Pitchforks have it could be either two to six prong and there are definitely a curvature to it. This item was a three pronged spear with prongs on the end that you would consider a trident versus a pitchfork. Now if somebody wanted to submit a pitchfork and it looked like a pitchfork 
that's definitely something that we can address. Um, obviously, if it's being held um, in a forward-facing motion, that tends to imply an impaling or some sort of active motion. That may not be, but if it's held up in, say, American Gothic or it's held down towards the ground, obviously that um, can, is all considered and that would probably be let through. But I can't really say until I actually see it in action. But as a team, for especially in regards to props and in regards to any items that we're currently um, looking at to reject, we've only rejected seven and four of those have been resubmitted. So there's only been three definite re, um, rejections. Those items are all considered as a team these decisions are made. And in some cases, we've e actually escalated up to management as well. So these items that we're rejecting are not taken lightly. They're definitely decided as a company and definitely pushed up to management when needed. As you guys might all be aware, sometimes those the products that are submitted from the people who complain about those products aren't exactly uh, PC all the time. No, I'm, I'm saying specific, <laughs> specifically that per sometimes those particular members who are the ones who are upset that we didn't let something like their pitchfork go through, um, they have a history with us. And I think that you guys sometimes know that history, but sometimes need to make mental notes. I don't know if anybody uh, caught my uh, comment about the uh, the uh, if somebody actually were to submit an actual pitchfork, um, I think that it would probably be okay as long as you don't put it with the torch. Only the map gets those. <laughs> oh come on! Take away all our fun. That's gross, crazy. Uh, Francis asked your question, right? And so I believe I have one more question, I think. Um, this person I am me very quickly and then closed the, the I am. I'm not sure if they really want to ask a question. So Big Dog Mud, if you're there and you want to ask a question, um, feel free. Yeah, I live on uh, Campfire Beach, known as Hemp Beach. I was wondering why we can't paintball there. It's probably the permissions of the area, so um, I'm not certain what the permissions are of the area on um, the Campfire Beach. Um, is it possible to get changed? It might be. Uh, we'd have to look into it. Um, if you the can, whole community? If you can file a fuse ticket under the community tab, um, uh, it, that will be directed to me, and I will um, bring that up to see if we can actually... Um, change that for your community. Okay, we can do that. Last question. Like I said, Camp Farm Beach is known as Hemp Beach. We were starting a Hemp Beach patrol with vehicles and we were told that uh, it was no longer going to permit the usage of a hemp leaf. Is that true? Give me one second, guys, and um, I'm, I'm going to go um, ask someone in product submissions a question really quickly about your question. So while that's happening, the, the moderator is... Okay, well, so, so Helper Yoko is going to go talk to s someone about that. Uh, I don't know if it's a touchy subject. We just want to... Uh, we're right not promoting the use of hemp. We're promoting the name of our community.
So, um, yeah, we're just going to go ask the question so that we are answering it correctly. It's not so much that it's a sensitive subject, it's just that we don't want to give the wrong answer. Um, in the meantime, uh, was there any questions that we can... Yeah. That's funny. Is there any qu other questions besides that particular one? Um, I'll ask one since it's all quiet. Um, uh, I asked about the uh, hierarchy and bone-based animations on prop objects, and I'm assuming the only reason you haven't done it on world objects is because of the collision problems? The only... Say the, say the question again. Um, like world-based objects, uh, you only allow the uh, texture-based animation. Um, I'm assuming you don't do any hierarchy animation because it'd be hard to calculate the collisions actually moving around in 3D space. Uh, well, it, it's more just a matter of, you know, the tools and, you know, things like that that would, that would be involved to, to do that. I, I don't know that it's... I wouldn't say that there's any, you know, specific reason why it's out of the question, you know, other than just the amount of, uh, just basically it being a project to, to do those things. Uh, cool. Thank you. No, it's not uh, collision-based. Going back to the question about the um, hemp leaf uh, item, the policy hasn't changed since, um, I, I know it's been a couple of years now that the, the hemp policy has been in there. So we, that, that's just a rumor that we're not, no longer going to be accepting submissions with uh, hemp leaves or the word hemp. Um, that is, policy has not changed. Okay, so I submit a paint job for a car with a hemp leaf on it, it'll go through then, right? Not necessarily, as long as it follows the submission guidelines um, under the hemp category. Okay. Oh, I know about the copyright. No problem. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, feedback, monster? We love you. Yeah, we love the props and the mannequins. We're really enjoying them, despite all the complaining we're doing. And and I appreciate all the feedback that you know you've been giving in in the forums. You know, it, we can kind of stick with you know simple items. You know, that are easy to to make. Um, you know, but sometimes it it it's a good thing to kind of bump up the level of the types of items that we're making, even though, it, you know, there's going to be a learning curve and, you know, we're going to have to refine it and, and kind of polish it. So, uh, you know, the, the results of the props, you know, after even a couple of weeks, just seeing the different items that uh, are being made is just really impressive. So, you know, it's kind of a, a tribute to uh, the creativity of the developers. Hey, hey Chaz, actually, I, I do have one more thing. Any possibility, if you're going to refine these and do some more things next time around, that we could get uh, a higher n number of node counts, more than five? Six would be ideal, or seven? Uh, that, that's possible. I mean, it was, you know, first kind of seeing, you know, if there were going to be any issues in general, just just the, you know, the first batch. But uh, uh, it's possible. Um, a, you know, a silent one that kind of went in, um, you know, when we added parameters to uh, Previewer, um, you know, that kind of adds some flexibility as, as well to, 
how you do your submissions. So the, the parameters that you're using for props, um, we also added them in for like hover packs <coughs> and hover boats, things that basically have the uh, you know the thrust, being able to pick your the color of the 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 thrust flames. Um, so so the parameters has has been something we've also talked about, and you know this is kind of one of application of it. I did have a quick question about the parameters, if you, if, if I could. Sure. Of the props, uh, typically in the past, animated items have a slightly higher texture count than static items. For the sake of, uh, like, stop frame animation, where you're using a strip, uh, you can Right now, the, the props are, I think, 65,536, so 1,256 by 256 animation, which when, uh, I mean, uh, texture, so when you're creating animation, you're, especially that, that stop frame animation that I was talking about, you can only create one texture just to have like a 128 one by 128 added to that for the animation would be uh, extremely helpful, but I don't want to. I don't want to do anything that's going to increase the price of the animated prop. Did yeah, I did I say that clearly? Yeah, I mean that's that's basically so that you know the the specs for the props kind of went through a f few um, revisions uh, as we were kind of doing the the beta, if you will, or the development of the props, um, and it's kind of exactly that balancing the price of the props versus um, you know increasing uh, the pixel count or the uh, you know the vert count so we, we kind of uh, balance those out and that's why there's kind of this smaller uh, but cheaper prop and then there's a second ver version which is a larger you know more pixels but more expensive prop and then right. there's a set for each of them um, I mean, it is possible, you know, if you really want to, uh, to use a, for example, two-node prop um, where the second node really doesn't have any mesh on it. Um, that's that's so what you, I've been doing. Yeah, so I mean, it, it all in the end shows up as a prop, uh, you know, as far as what, what it shows up in a, as, as auctions, um, you know, so if you really need the more... Uh, the higher budget, you you know, it costs a little bit more, but you can get the higher budget. My my, it is very. It's just a very gradual change. It it works very well. But uh, I used like a three-node prop where I only used one node. And I'm wondering if in the future, when you hopefully you do plan on making it so they can have more than one prop out at a time, uh, if it's going to be like a one prop per node. If I'm using, say, a, a neck prop right now, that uh, a neck node right now that I that I don't uh, have anything on, will I be able to drop? Is there any? Uh, you probably haven't even thought of it like this, but I, I, is it when you make multiple props? Is it only going to be one prop per node? Or is there even any thinking like that? Because I think you should have like uh, multiple head props. Somebody wants to put on glasses that somebody else made, and a hat that somebody else made. It all goes on the head. So yeah, I was just a little concerned about that. Yeah, I I, I don't even know what the uh, you know the m multiple prop would look like. For example, if you put on one prop and it's a drinking pose, and you put on another prop that's a treat bag pose, how, you know, those would work together. Oh, that's true. Um, so, you know, at this point, the way it's set up, uh, I mean, you can only hold one item, and it, it's kind of, basically, it remembers this is the item you're holding, you know, so, you know, if it, going from that to being able to hold multiple things. Um, one of the things I had originally thought about um, was using the, you know, the part system. So basically you'd put on a prop 
and then within that prop you would have you know kind of like with a um, you know a buggy drop a buggy and then you can change the tires and you can change the um, the hood and the paint job um, you would have a prop that you'd put on and then within that prop you'd be able to change what's attached to the hand what's attached to the head um, the the current part system is really geared towards vehicles right now um, but if you know at a later date we could make the part system um, a little more generic that might be one way to do multiple pieces on a prop. But again, I'm kind of throwing that out from a uh, you know a thirty thousand feet type type thing, or thirty thousand meters, whatever it is in here. A hundred thousand meters. Okay, thanks, Jazz. I think that's Soeed. I think that's how you pronounce it. Soeed has a question. Soed. Okay. Thank you. I think that that's a good point that you bring up. Um, Actually, you know what I would love to see? I'm going to take a screenshot of this too. Everyone who thinks that the uh, the, the, the five minute timer thing should be uh, toggleable on and off, um, raise your hand. My hand won't go up. And that's why he asked that question. He knows the it's hand doesn't trick. work. Do do hands not work in these seats? They do not. Really? I see Mike over there. He has his hand up. And I see Francis's hand up again. Okay. Well, this ended up not being a really good picture. But, yes, I think that that's um, a good point, and I'll, I'll have to bring that up. We could type it in here. Anybody to picture? Everybody, put your hands up. So I I know um, the design goal that they had was basically to kind of inspire. Um, what would you call it? inspire? communication. In other words, you would walk up to the person and ask them to see their outfit. So you kind of, is there like a donkey being put on? <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Don't mind me distracted by the donkey. Um, it was supposed to inspire uh, conversation, you know, where you'd walk up to the person and say, hey, can I check out your, your object or your, uh, your outfit? Um, I guess taking it from the other perspective is does anybody feel that they would like that where you know somebody has to come up to you to say hey I want to see your outfit and not just something that you would toggle, toggle on and leave on. I, I've got a question uh, Chaz is there a way that the user the, the one who wants to view can toggle it on and off for everyone around them instead of the person who's wearing it. Uh, well, the reason for the, the, the toggle was, um, hey, I want to see your outfit, you know, having that, that uh, conversation happen. So it was, it was supposed to be a conversation starter. But if we were to do away with that, who would be doing the toggle, the where E or the view, viewer? In this case, it would be the person wearing the outfit. They would, instead of instead of it saying um, allow um, allow view outfit, um, instead of that being something you'd click and it would last for five minutes, um, the suggestion would be that would be kind of like a checkbox where you would turn it on and off. 
Who I definitely vote no on that. No I, on the No. I vote yes because then the designers who are wearing their own things can just have it all the time. That makes sense yeah, from the money making perspective. You know, maybe this should be a, a a forum discussion. I hate to bring into the forums. I hate to bring anything in the forums. Oh, I don't the read. Donkey. But probably a thread started in the uh, uh, connect with the Mab section of the forums, and then we can talk yeah, about I it. Yeah, I agree. We should meeting. all just go to the Mab and discuss the donkey that Bash has. Yes. Let's all talk about my donkey. <laughs> Shall we vote on it? Yeah. Is there anybody else who has any questions? It's getting kind of late. We've been here for yeah, a while. Yeah, I do. Uh, All right. This is for the Chaz, if you still around. Chaz, can you... Sure. Okay. When are we going to get to see your parrots in auctions as a prop so we can wear it on our shoulders? Okay, class. Um, Yvonne, your parrots. I don't know. Someday? I, 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 I have no answer to that. You mean you're not working on that? I mean, aren't you just sitting around? Wouldn't you like to free them from their posts and put a, and let them come home with us? You know, in the copious amount of spare time that he has, yes, that's I sleep. Well, I didn't last night, but that's because the cat peed in the bed, and I couldn't sleep on the floor because it was hard and it was cold. All right, I don't think that anybody that wanted to know the answer. <laughs> and that's why there's no cats in there. Thank you for sharing, man. I do have a question. It was All right. anybody, re was anybody recording this? Because I only had voice half the time. I believe that Chagall was. Re I, I see Chagall in the audience. Yeah. She usually records it. Um, everyone say thank you, Chagall, because she's wonderful. And that special footage of the... Um, forget, I'm not going to say... Now, just so you guys know, she she isn't just wonderful because I say she's wonderful. She is wonderful. You know, get to know her. She's wonderful. Yeah, whatever. I bet you can't name one person in this entire virtual world that doesn't like you. Never met her, so I don't know. Besides me. Alright guys, it's getting kind of late. Uh, we've been here for an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, is a anybody else have any last minute questions? Yeah, I just wanted to say, nice ass fash. And your donkey's cute, too. <laughs> I, I think the donkey looks better. <laughs> I really appreciate that, guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I really am going to report you to live help if you don't cut it out.